Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the National Basketball Arena for under 16A school time where we have Skull Vera, Gonsmall and Blarney up against Skull Pubble, Sleeve Lucra in Ratmore and Kerry. So it's a Cork and Kerry battle. I'm joined here with Jason Clean today. Good afternoon, Danny. I'm not too bad, Jason. So just on the starting fives there, okay, we have with Blarney, we've uh, Kelvin O'Donoghue and Eli Linehan, also Jack O'Leary, Matthew McCarthy, and number 22, Mark McGuire. For the Kerry team, Ratmore Lane line with Ronan Collins, number 7, Damien Cronin, number 9, 17, the captain is James Darmody, 14, Alan Deneen, and number 15, Paddy O'Leary. As you have there, Linehan gets to the basket for two. Just Jason, as we look at the starting fives there, okay, there's there's one or two players in particular on both teams, obviously, that you probably would be somewhat familiar with. Obviously, Jason coach Tim Blog on ratings this year today, on rating the Hool Hoops National Cup final, where they, they defeated Neptune. Now, on that Neptune team that day, there was two players who were featuring today. So, 10, Kelvin O'Donoghue, and also number 8, Eli Linehan. Yes, yeah, like you said, Danny, a lot of these players would be very familiar with, and, and they'd be fam very familiar with the arena as well. I think for Blarney, Lennon will be one player who will need to have a big game today. I'm um, also represented Ireland on the under 16s as well this year, so he'll be uh, he'll be the go-to person. Now, and obviously, both teams had kind of a tough battles to get to the league final today. So just on the uh, how they went, it was actually in the quarter final. Blarney Sculver actually defeated Mal or Malahide by one point. Then in the semi-final, they defeated Malachies. Now, Malachies were the cup final. People might remember that day. That was the day CJ Fulton went off here in the arena. Um, and actually, Blarney defeated them 68. So that just shows uh, how strong this Blarney team can be on their day. And that's it. What a day that was. 15, three point. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, Twitter really blew up that day, like, with the, with the CJ Fulton stuff. I'm still trying to make 15 since then, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Also, uh, as I said there, obviously that was Blarney's path to the final. Luca Ratmore, how they made it here, okay? It was in the quarter final. They beat Port Arlington about 16 points. Then they went to the semi final and they beat uh, Klaus Kieran League Slip by 14 points. So both teams kind of having different journeys to the final here today. Blarney probably having two very, very close games and beating Malachies, who would have been obviously one of the heavily ranked favourites for this. An awful lot of up and coming players in this uh, on the floor right now. You, you would expect to see a lot of them in the in the Super League in the coming years. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And obviously, you players out there now representing, especially with the I'll be familiar with the, the lads from Blarney. Um, two or three lads out there representing Blue Demons, and then also two or three lads representing Neptune. So it's good when the schools basketball when you have these lads who come together to play as one. As you can see, they obviously look blaringly starting out in a 3-2 zone. So again, as we mentioned earlier in the commentary in the, in the earlier games, in the arena, a lot of teams will kind of force people to take the outside shot because, as Jason mentioned earlier, teams aren't really familiar with these baskets. And obviously, a lot of these school kids play their games in school gyms and all that. So Blarney are going up to do with a 3-2 zone defense, forcing Ratmore to shoot the ball from the outside. So let's see how that fares over them. Stolen away here by O'Leary. O'Leary takes the rebound, he looks long, finds Lenehan. Lenehan can't get the two to go on that one, it was a really excellent move to the basket. So with 5-11 remaining in the first, it's Blarney who lead on a score, all square, at 6-6, six, six. excellent basket inside. Both teams have a reasonably good support here today in the arena, do you Jason? Yeah, that's it. And it's definitely very loud in here. We can hear it in the commentary box up here. Some fantastic players on the floor, Danny. I mean, looking at it there, O'Leary, number five for uh, Blarney, I believe, plays his club basketball with Demons. Yeah, correct. I think he, O'Leary, five, and also number 12 will be teammates of Blue Demons. And then on the other side, you'd have number 10, Kelvin and number eight, Eli Linehan, would also be teammates of Neptune. So. It's good to see here the Demons and Neptune lads pairing up to see if they win a Schools Cup together. A 
And also looking at the, you know, the camp, the national camp that we have every summer. A lot of these kids, you do recognise them camp every year, and that's the nice thing about the, uh, the basketball community being small in Ireland. You know, if you coach at enough camps and if you're around enough, you do get to know a lot of these young players. Yeah, it just shows, I think, that, it, you know, that does make a difference. Obviously, the kids who um, who do attend these basketball camps during the summer, these are the kids that are going to be here on final day when the trophies are handing out. I think the Ratmore team there, Jason, is like, a, is like a, a darts kind of a song going on over there. It's been well practiced anyway, I imagine. They're chanting the Michael Van Gerwen chant there now to Ratmore at the moment. And we just uh, and that's proof, Danny, the re-emergence of basketball in Kerry in the last two or three years, you know, and uh, Tralee Warriors having a big part to do with that. It's just it, it's gone from strength to strength in the last couple of years, and because of that, I think the similarities between GA and the love of GA and Kerry, and the similarities with that in basketball, is it's really attractive to young people in Kerry. Yeah, exactly, and obviously with the Kalorgan there also just after winning the men's division one. So next year again, for the first time in a long time, we're going to have an all Kerry. Super League battle. So you no doubt they'll be sell out games week in, week out. You see Killarney as well in the Division One having sell out games every week. You know, it's good for basketball and it shows obviously this is under 16 air air care and we have a team from Kerry obviously in the final. So people might remember the obviously under 16 basketball there the last couple of years. Last year's winner we had the Bish and Galway who you know are, fami are familiar with winning under 16 cups. Then before that, we had Kalash Japarik and Lucan. We had Summerhill Sligo in college winning in 2015. Um, Calas Sanchez and Orr Moore, another team from Galway, winning in 2014. Malachies then won it in 2013. Um, again, the Bish won it in 2012, and Malachies in 2011. So in the last couple of years, there's been some familiar teams back here for constantly for the under-16s. So it's good to see two new teams out there today. And of all the teams that you listed there, Danny, you know, it's very spread out. And I think that's a testament to the the level of coaching and the level of, of working that the, the players are putting in throughout the year. You don't have to be from Dublin or Cork now to, to make it up here to the arena to play in the final. Yeah, exactly, and I think as you mentioned obviously about the national camp obviously being so feasible for everybody. You know, the national camp being the, it's an overnight camp, kids can come from Kerry, wherever they want, book in for the week, stay over. They probably played against these guys in camp and here they are now today playing against them in the school's final. We just have a two minutes remaining here in the first quarter. That's actually going to be foul on Alan Deneen. It's going to be called for an offensive blocking foul. So we're going to have a Sculver or Blarney's ball. And so Donahue to inbound the ball on the inline for Blarney. Blarney ladies were just uh, under 19, uh, B were just un just defeated there by Loretta Stevens Green just previously, so Blarney have a good following here today with both teams representing. Darmody tries to go to the basket. Darmody gets the two, now he's going to go to the line shooting one. What's interesting about the start of this game as uh, to the earlier game result this morning, it's a team that seems to fast break the ball or having the more success. Both teams aren't looking to shoot the ball as much as they should be probably here in the National Basketball Arena. So they're settling, looking to get, try and get the fast break, get the easy baskets. I think we, we do see that as a style emerging now in, in Irish basketball in general. You know, we're playing to our strengths. We, ha we do have a lot of quick guards around the country and, and that's starting to show in the, in the competitions. Yeah, let's see. Now can Blarney get a couple of those scores? Well, if there was a, a battle, if there was a competition for the crowd, it'd definitely be the Ratmore crowd who'd be winning at the moment. A lively bunch over there. Well, they've plenty to celebrate now in the first quarter. And neither team looking too phased on the big stage here. I said, obviously, Eli Linehan going to the line there, you know, played here in the National Cup final under 18 with Neptune. See, obviously, this is his second time out here, so he'd be kind of familiar to the court and the surroundings. And obviously, in the Cup final where they played against Templog, there was a much bigger crowd here again, so I don't think this would have too much bearing on Linehan. Comes up short in those free throws, though. 
So just 1.30 remaining in the first. Maguire takes the rebound, gives it off to the guard. O'Donoghue. Back to Linehan. O'Donoghue. Excellent defense there by the Kerry team. Excellent defense. O'Donoghue really had to work for that basket there, Jason, didn't he? Yeah, work you did, Danny. That was a fantastic finish. I think that the Kerry team there, Ratmore, would be a bit disappointed. They had the shot clock down to nearly four seconds, so they shut him out for 20 seconds. And then in the last two seconds, then obviously O'Donoghue managed to get the shot off. Really good offense. So just over a minute here, just under a minute here remaining in the first. O'Donoghue fires up a tree, doesn't go. Blarney are still sticking with the 3-2 zone. See, does that work for them? Not so much that time. Ronan Collins gets the two on the inside. I think the referee's just having a word with Eli Linehan there. Feels uh, that Linehan went down a bit too easy there with that contact. And it was inside the charge circle too. For those at home that don't know that rule, that semi-circle that's under the basket, you can't take a charge in that area. So Linehan probably needs to get himself up higher in the lane if he is going to try and play defence at the back of that zone for Blarney. It's 13 seconds here remaining. Stealing up by Blarney. McCarthy to Linehan. Finds O'Donoghue inside. Can't go on. At the end of one, it's Skull Pubble Sleeve, Luke Ra, and Ratmore who lead on a scoreline. At 12 to 8. We'll be back in the second quarter very, very shortly, so stay tuned. We're back here at the second quarter now, and it's going to be a skull pubble sleeve Lucre Ratmore's ball as they lead 12 points to 8. Um, Jason, what do you think of the first quarter overall? Do you think the Blarney would be happy with how their 3-2 zone defence worked and they'll be happy with giving up 12 points? Yeah, you're definitely uh, you're okay with 12 points. You know, it's not too bad, especially with the pace of the game. But uh, it's, it's important now for Blarney not to leave this lead stretch out too much. I think the, the style of play that's going on right now may suit Blarney down 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 the run because you know like we said a lot of players come from Neptune and Demons and that's very much a, a Cork style of play is to run the ball yeah exactly and obviously as we went through obviously Blarney's path to the final beating Malachy's and beating Malahoy by you know a three and one point respectively they're used to a close game so they'll, they'll want to keep this game as close as possible yeah and credit to Ratmore now at the minute they're being very efficient with their with their offences and one thing you know I just actually noticed there is like Blarney are really only getting one shot every opportunity. Like if 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 uh, Lenehan's going to be shooting the three pointer, which has him obviously twenty something feet from the basket, Blarney don't have much offensive presence in there to get rebounds. So a lot of the defensive rebounds are going to wrap more. Blarney going to call a timeout as they trail eighteen to eight. So we're going to be back shortly.
So a 7-0-1 remaining in the second. Blarney had to call a timeout there because I think the first minute of the second quarter, it was definitely Ratmore came out with it being the more aggressive, you know, putting a few quick points on the board. Yeah, we said that, and it's, uh, Blarney are used to playing a close game, but they definitely don't want to be playing catch-up this early on in the competition. Yeah, and I can, one adjustment that Blarney's coach Stephanie made there, he has Linehan now at the top of the free-throw line. I think he realised if Blarney are going to be shooting the outside shot and Linehan is outside the three-point line, he doesn't give much of a rebound of presence. Also, Blarney made an introduction there okay, of uh, Isaac Arute. And obviously he comes into the game there. He seems like a big young fella. He might be able to get a couple of rebounds as well and help out Linehan with the rebounding. And Danny, we look at uh, Ratmore, number seven, Ronan Collins, having a fantastic game. Another very familiar player that, that, that we would all know right now. Yeah, and just as, as you said, he just he's on the ball. He's gone in the inside now himself, Ronan. So both teams now are in the zone, with um, Blarney being in the 3-2, whereas uh, Ratmore being the, in the 2-3 zone. Ratmore are looking to give up the outside shots to Blarney, and they're just looking to kind of secure their defensive rebound. Keep limit them to a one-shot offense. I think that's what, that's what the Ratmore uh, coaching staff are looking to get out of this one. Again, excellent st steal by Collins. Just that it was one second on the shot clock. He'll be happy with that. And again, good defense on the end by, end by Linehan. Yeah, and a lot of contact there, but it was legal contact. You know, the, the Blarney defense stood their ground, and uh, Ronan Collins made much of it at the end, but it was a, a fine defensive play. Yeah, they didn't really give him much options, you know, Linehan. It's quite tall for this age group, you know, him in the middle of the key did well from. So we've got Aerie on the ball here now. Back to Linehan. As you look down there, like Blarney seemed to have some space to take that outside shot, but you know, they're not looking for that shot. As I said, that obviously the 24 second shot clock violation just sounded. That's a sign that they're not communicating right now because someone should have been telling the, the player on the ball that the, the clock was running down. A bad shot is better than a turnover. Then. Yeah, exactly. At least give him a chance to get an offensive rebound or something. On the other end here, Alan Dean drives inside, you know, uses his strength and he gets to the line shooting too. And Alan having a good game now as well, securing a lot of rebounds on the inside. He play, he's playing at the back of the zone here at the moment, obviously for Ratmore, like getting a lot of defensive rebounds. As you mentioned earlier in the commentary there, Jason, about the, um, the GA players in basketball, looking down there number 14, he looks like a player who'd be familiar to the GA pitch as well. I'm sure about 80% of them on the floor right <laughs> now would be. Yeah. Obviously, Blarney now are eager to get a couple of points on the board here. Now, okay, they won't be happy with having you know, eight points after 11, 12 minutes of basketball. O'Leary fires up a long three. That one rims out. Collins takes the rebound, gets an outlet, stolen away by O'Leary. He has a two-on-one. Good decision getting it to Linehan on the break. Linehan gets a two to go. Really good and selfish play there by O'Leary. He realised there was a two-on-one. Getting the ball to Linehan, puts the ball in the basket. Now he goes to line shooting one. What was impressive is where he put the ball. You know, he put it in the path of where he wanted the player to run to because he could see the defense coming behind. Linehan will be happy with that one. He's one for three from the free throw line, but really happy to get that one. And now the scoring looks a lot better for Blarney. Just with the substitutions there, Blarney, they have now actually have Linehan kind of at the top of their zone defense. Again, but moving him to the top probably takes away from the back of the zone. And obviously that's where Alan Dineen found the space where he went to work. But Donahue hands it off to his Neptune teammate, Linehan. Two doesn't go. Tip doesn't go. And again, rebound taken by Dineen. Great defensive rebound. And an offensive rebound. Excellent score from Linehan. Really good, really good job there. 
And Blarney were unlucky there. They were kind of at the back there. They were playing with four men on defence. Linehan didn't get fully back to court. He made a smart decision, though, and he got him out in the open floor for the score. Another score on the inside by Alan Deneen. I think Blarney's coaching staff need to probably make an adjustment on that. Um, Deneen's after going for the last six points at that side in the zone. So maybe Blarney may need to have a look at that. But on the other end, it's definitely Linehan who's the offensive, offensive key player at this end for Blarney. You know, Danny, down seven, you definitely get the sense that uh, the Blarney coaching staff aren't panicking right now. They know their team can put up a lot of points in a short period of time. And like we said earlier, it's just about maintaining for the minute now until they can get their run. Yeah, and it was, uh, again, look, free truck came up short there, but it was the fast break scores there by Lenihan. Like, you know, I think that is definitely key. Definitely, it's the easiest way to beat his own defence, kind of get up the floor before they get a chance to set up. Dropping the knowledge today, Danny. Deneen takes another rebound on the inside. Really going to work, and there he is. He's doing a fantastic job, basically making a nuisance of himself against that zone. Yeah, you notice as well, like, you know, he's getting the rebounds, he's keeping the ball high, and he's going straight back up with it, you know, so really good job down there. It definitely seems to be the lads from Kerry look to be the more physical team out there. Deneen getting the shooter's touch on that free throw. Deneen going two for two. So we've got three minutes, 15 seconds remaining here in the half. It's Ratmore lead 24th, plays Blarney's 15. O'Donoghue, three rims out. O'Leary takes the rebound. Exton pass inside, finds O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue slips that in for two. And with three minutes remaining, we're going to have a timeout. So we'll be. So we're back after that time on, as I said, three minutes remaining in the half. And it's Ratmore lead, 24 plays 17. Deneen back in the inside. Damry really, Ratmore really working the ball around here in the zone, seeing what the best option they get. And a great option at that. James Damry, the captain, fires them a three-pointer. Jason, that's a bit disheartening on the defence. Play really good defence across the 20 seconds and then a three-pointer at the end. Yeah, and Ratmore doing a fantastic job of finding the space against that zone. With that five quick points there like, by Ratmore. Like, that just shows how good this team is. Like, they can score basketball that quick. On the other end, Linehan goes to work inside for two. Really good score from him. Darmody inside to Deneen. Deneen again inside for two. That seems to be Deneen's favoured position there, picking the ball up on that block, squaring up to the basket and just attacking the basket hard. Really good work by him. I said at some point they're going to have to start stop giving him any space now to get to the basket because 
very strong body, and he's what's that? He's third and one, second and one now at this point. Yeah, I think it's his third, and you know he's making his free throws as well. Like so, he's really doing the damage on the offense out there. Linehan on this end to O'Donoghue. Deneen didn't felt like a pass that time. Excellent rebound there that time. That just shows. I don't think the Ratmore coach would be too disappointed with that. Really good aggression there, getting to the uh, off for the offensive rebound, and Deneen obviously just draws a foul. Deneen on his third foul now, so he's going to have to come out, I'd say, for the, the rest of the half. That'll put a big hole in the zone defense here, because as we can see, obviously, number 12, um, PJ Makoff, makes his way to the subs bench. Probably not as big physically as Deneen on the inside. So that maybe Blarney can capitalise on that. Yeah, we've seen Deneen there on that uh, defensive play, just kind of arms straight up and hoping that the, the offence misses the shot. Couldn't do much in the way of challenging. And the Blarney coaching staff has made an adjustment there to the defence. They're going, they're going to a man-to-man -man now rather than the zone defence. Hopefully they might get a bit of luck with that. So we will be one minute and six seconds remaining in the half. As Deneen, the offensive powerhouse himself, he checks out of the game. A much deserved break now for a minute or two for Deneen. I think that's a good decision by the coach because as I said, there's one minute remaining in the half. If he can just get Deneen a quick little rest just for the half, he comes back then he has two fouls for the whole second half. Yeah, you definitely don't want him picking up his fourth in the first half. Now Ratmore stick with the three or with the two three zone defense. So even though they're missing their middle man in the zone, they're still sticking with the zone defense. O'Donoghue goes right to work into that middle of the basket for two. Now, Jason, in your opinion, do you think O'Donoghue would have got that basket if Deneen was still in the middle of the key? I definitely would have made it more difficult. I mean, you have to give the benefit of the doubt to the offense. It was a tough basket to make, but uh, there's definitely a big gap in the middle now without Deneen. Yeah, let's see how Blarney do against that. With 35 seconds remaining here in the half. And Blarney lead 30, or sorry, Rob Morley 33 plays 23. As Ronan Collins moves inside, uses left off the glass. O'Donoghue to Linehan. Linehan to O'Shea. Hands it off to O'Donoghue. Linehan comes up short now, it was a really an excellent move to the basket, you know. Fortunately, it didn't go in. Collins tries to beat the buzzer. And at halftime, Rat Morley on a scoreline 35 plays. Skullvera, gone small, Blarney 23. We'll be back very shortly with the second half. Thank you very much.
And welcome back to this second half of the under 16A School Cup, where we have leading at the moment, we have Skull Pubble Sleeve, Luke from Ratmore and Kerry, taking on Skull Vera, Gunsmall, Blarney in Cork. 35 points to 23. Um, Jason, just obviously Blarney trailing at the moment. What do Blarney need to do in the second half to get back into this game? Yeah, Danny, you know, you'd like to see what would happen if the if it gets under 10 points because the, the lead has been stretched now for a while, but it seems like every time Blarney get it down to 10, you know, Ratmore run right back down and put it back up to 12. So you'd like to see the, the game get down to eight or six points and see how they, how they respond to that. Yeah, and obviously, look, uh, at the moment, obviously, Ratmore can have two main offensive weapons. They're doing a lot of damage. Number seven, Roland Collins, had 14 first half points. And then obviously, number 14, um, Alan Deneen also had 10. So that's 24 of their points. At the moment, Deneen is off with foul trouble. Is this a good chance for Blarney to kind of take advantage of that? Yeah, it definitely is. Like you said, Deneen is a, a big anchor, a big presence in the middle of that zone. So Blarney are going to have to attack the middle and try to get to the basket. Yeah, but obviously in his in his um, well he's missing. It's obviously Collins needs to step up. Collins gets to the basket there, draws the foul, goes to the line shooting too. So obviously 14 points out of 35 in 16 minutes of basketball is really good, really impressive for number seven there for the black and yellow of Ratmore. I think you're giving the commentators curse there, Danny. Can't say <laughs> nothing for the next one. On the other end, then obviously Blarney, their offensive um, game has been a lot around Eli Linehan. Obviously, he has nine points out of their 23. Came up and look at that. And obviously, Kelvin Donahue with six. So, definitely the two lads from Neptune doing the damage for Blarney. Blarney have switched back to a man to man. Just obviously felt like they didn't have as much luck in the zone as they should have. This is out to a 14 point game now. Obviously, because it's under 16 with the 8 minutes a quarter, the game can go qu quite fast. So, Blarney just need to be careful now that they don't leave this. Um, they definitely need to get the next score and a stop. They don't want this going any further than this. And again, commentators curse. As I said, that Linehan with a long three pointer to bring it back to an 11 point game. Takes his total to 12, really showing his worth. We're seeing how Blarney can get a stop on the D. Just obviously Blarney have made an adjustment there, so Linhan has actually switched on to, to Collins. So it's really good to see, like when you see um, you know, I suppose the two better players in each team matching up against each other. And again, though, Ratmore are definitely limiting Blarney to one shot per offense, like again. That was really good out of Ronan Collins there, like to find that find his player for an open two. So a 5.36 remaining, we're gonna have a timeout. So we'll be back very shortly. So after two fast break scores by Ratmore, um, Blarney for himself using the first time out of the second half early on in the third quarter. So obviously let's see what the coach, kind of, what kind of stuff he's put in to stop this. Linehan again on the inside for two. Takes his total to 14 points. That's 50% of his team's points, so he's really doing his job out there today, number eight, Eli Linehan. Quick, quick match, Danny. Quick match. Didn't take long to figure it out, no, no.
but we did see both of them uh, points from that more before the timeout. Our both baskets came from the same side, and it was a rotation issue because the back man in the zone was stepping across too far, and it was allowing the left. Yeah, just as you said, it happens here again. I think the Blarney coaching staff need to realise that. Um, if you remember, obviously in the first half, Alan Deneen was doing it on the far side of the zone, and then on this end. Just on that there, Linehan's after losing the ball. Um, tried to win it back, but he actually got called for a foul. No, he got called for an unsportsmanlike foul. Referee felt he didn't make an attempt to get the ball, and he stopped, obviously, the transition play by Ratmore. That's actually a new rule that came in this season. It's, it's taken uh, quite a while for referees and players alike to adjust to it. It's basically to not waste time. So the player had a, a clear chance for a fast break, and it was stopped by the Blarney by the Blarney player, so it's an intentional foul, two shots and possession. I think in Linehan's defence, he was only doing what any other player would do, obviously. He made a mistake, lost the ball, so he tried to win it back as quickly as he could. But look, he'll shake that off, okay, that's his first foul of the game, um, and I think he'll be back in there for his team, no bother. We see Deneen coming back in the game now as well. He's on three fouls, so he's, uh, his aggressiveness might be toned down a little bit, but we'll see. You can see him there at the back of the zone. He's kind of lurking away, like waiting for that opportunity to get in there. Great drive and find there. Just as you spoke about aggressiveness, Deneen was in the midst of that there, trying to fight for the ball again. You're going to have to be careful, but you don't want to take away from the player's game either, you know. Exactly, yeah. Well, Donahue finds Linehan. Another deep one. Doesn't go. Ball gets knocked out of bounds, and we're going to have a wrap more ball. It's not sure if it's uh, very clear on the stream here at the moment, but you can actually, if you can listen, you can actually hear the wrap more fans just now going again, you know, with all their chants. Really good to see. I think they're enjoying the day off school as well, Danny. That's it, too, yeah. Look, another offensive rebound by Ratmore leading to another score. It definitely is. Um, if we had the stat here on this game, I definitely think Ratmore have definitely taken a lot more shots than Blarney. They're getting two or three shots every offense. So we've got 3.53 remaining in the third. It's a 15-point game. Ratmore lead 43 Play Sculver of Blarney's 28. This is where Blarney need to get going now. Can't go into the fourth quarter with a 15-point deficit. Of eight minutes of basketball, it's just it's just a lock to, to pull back. Deneen making a nuisance of himself in the middle of that zone as well. Deneen with the rebound straight away, and Deneen for two. Takes the total to 12 points, and he probably has a similar amount of rebounds as well. A pass goes astray. Another offensive rebound. Another offensive rebound, and they draw the foul. Blarney going to use their second time out. I think the coach is going to make a decision. It's at 17 point deficit now. The longer they leave it, you know, this could be a 20 point game. They definitely need to get a response out of that. We'll be back shortly after this timeout.
So back after that timeout, three minutes and twelve seconds remaining. And Ronan Collins goes to the line shooting two. For as noisy as it can be, Jason, today in the arena, both sets of fans were really quiet there as Ronan took that free shot. Like. It's like when you're kicking in, uh, in rugby, you know, that the, in Tolman Park, the whole crowd will go silent. Yeah, nobody wanted to put him off. McCarthy checks back into the game for Blarney. I think on the back of that time out there, the Blarney coach, um, John O'Sullivan, has kind of looking to go kind of like a zone press. Seems to have worked straight away as O'Donoghue finds himself with the ball. O'Donoghue for two. Now we need to see now what, um, what rat more like a break down this press, because obviously Blarney are going to be looking to go for a press. Offensive foul. Two stops in a row at the back of that time out. John O'Sullivan will definitely be happy with that decision. The referee just checking the floor for any wet spots after that fall. He's happy enough to go on. And we're back with the ball in Blarney. Well who? Linehan uses the screen, moves inside. Excellent defense. O'Donoghue for three. Hits that three and points to the home points to his own crowd. Just to try to get them back into the game as well. It's excellent defense there again. So we've two minutes 16 seconds remaining. It's a 13 point game. Danny, we talk about uh, you know the effort to get back into a game being down. Blarney are making a little run now, and they're really going to have to capitalise on it and try to get the game under ten points and not leave Rat Moore. Yeah, I think these run. two minutes are going to be absolutely huge for Blarney. They need to make sure that you know if they keep doing what they're doing, keep this run going, and try and shut out, shut out Rat Moore. I don't know who thought about that one after hitting the last one. Shot clock is running down here now. who just gets it off before the shot clock. What do you think of that, Jesse? He tried to bang the ball off his opponent's foot. He just didn't find a way out of bounds. Yeah, the referee didn't fall for it, I think. But on the other end, Ronan Collins goes to the line, shooting one. Excellent play there for Ronan to get inside, score the two. That's one thing I noticed about that Ronan Collins there today. He's very good at observing the contact and finishing the play. I've been lucky enough to, to see him play a couple of times this year now. He's a fantastic young man. We'll see as he gets a bonus for all his hard work. Bonus doesn't go. So we have a 15 point game, 132 left. Blarney looking to quicken things up there with Linehan just outletting the ball fairly quick. Linehan moves inside, finds O'Donoghue, thinks about the shot. I think that was a rush shot there by Linehan. It was excellent defence by uh, Damien Cronin, number nine for Ratmore. He really closed out in that shot, forced him to be a tough shot. Blarney in a kind of like a 2-2-1 press now at the moment. That's not what they'll want. Blarney in a press, they're also on team fouls. So that foul obviously at the halfway line will result in number nine, Damien Cronin, walking half the length of the floor to shoot two shots as Blarney find himself in the penalty. That's the sixth, pers the sixth team foul of the quarter for them. And that's part and parcel, Danny, of, uh, of pressing, you know. You're trying to slow down the ball and get steals, but on the other side, you're risking uh, increased fouls. And that's obviously what Blarney wouldn't want, you know, committing that foul and now obviously letting um, Ratmore a chance to put the ball in the basket. So there was 17 points in it there two or three minutes ago. Blarney went down a bit of a run. Ratmore closed it out and now it's back to 17. And in fairness to Ratmore, Danny, you know, they've answered every time. Every time Blarney stepped up the press or made a few three-point shots or big plays, 
You see Rat Moore have answered every single time. Yeah, and again, there you see how quick from a shot from Dun O'Donoghue on one end to a rebound by Roland Collins, a quick outlet, and now they're back on the line again. That's really, really good offense there by the Rat Moore. So Paddy Murphy gets the free throw to go. It can be very disheartening as well for the likes of Blarney when you're trying to come back in the game and you know you commit a foul and you're standing on the line with the clock stopped hoping that the other team misses their free throws. Yeah exactly because it, it seems on the other end with the zone defense being so good by Ratmore, Blarney really need to work for their baskets um, where Ratmore are kind of walking down the court and getting free shots just as a result of the penalty foul. O'Donoghue to get it off before the shot clock again. When Blarney moved the ball, they're playing some really good basketball, just unfortunately they're not getting the stops to go with it. O'Donoghue again for two. A nice quick five points there by the Blarney guard. I think Conor Finnegan there might have thought he was playing soccer there, Jason. What you make of that one? Yeah, just stopping the ball. You know, he knew that pass was going somewhere and he couldn't see the, the offense, the offensive player sneaking in behind. So better to get a foot to it than give up a layup. So six seconds left in the third, and we're gonna have a timeout to wrap more. We're back for the final six seconds of the third quarter. Stolen by McCarthy. McCarthy from deep. And at the end of three, is Ratmore lead 51, plays 38. We're gonna have a quick short break during the middle of the third quarter. Or sorry, the end of the third quarter. We'll be back for the fourth quarter very soon. So, eight minutes of basketball to go. Ratmore lead, 51 plays, 38. What way did you see this one finish now, Jason? Yeah, it's like we talked about it. There was a game on earlier. And you look at Ratmore, you know, they've got most of their points from, from playing quick and playing fast. Now that they're up with an eight-minute quarter, do they slow the game down a little bit? But evidently not. And again, Ronan Collins there. Rebound on one end. 
a, fin a rebound on your end to finish play. It's really good to see from a young kid like him. Doing on both ends of the floor. And it Deneen. is easier to do in league out when you have someone like Deneen behind you that you can trust to grab that board. Yeah, I think it gives it gives the guards the freedom to run, knowing that he's going to secure the majority of the ball at the back. Blarney are getting good looks from those long twos, just unfortunately none of them dropping. Another excellent two there on the inside. Ronan Collins really has stepped up. Back to a 17 point game. Just over six and a half remaining. Linehan looks to go baseline. McGrath, O'Leary fires up a three. Doesn't go on this one. Good rebound there inside. That was a chance there for Blarney to fast break, but uh, not on Ronan Collins' watch. He made his way back there, intercepted the ball from Linehan. And now it's actually Rat Moore in possession now again. He's definitely doing a bit of it all, isn't he? You see some players are our scorers or our rebounders or whatever, but Ronan seems to be doing it all. Yeah. Just as we say, he's involved in him in again. Linehan finishes off for two. Six minutes to go, 15 point game. I think if Blair are going to have any bit of luck in the end of this game, they really need to limit um, Ratmore to one shot per offense. As I said, that Deneen takes another offensive rebound. Giving them three opportunities in that offense, and they eventually score. O'Donoghue to Linehan. Seems like Blarney have reverted back to a lot of one on one basketball now, trying to yeah. get scores. And you know yourself, Jason, playing against the zone, okay, that's never really going to work because it's one player going to be up against the five of them. That's it, and all the heads are turned looking, whereas Ratmore on the other end seems to be probing a lot more and finding the open man. Yeah, they're sharing the basketball well. Look, as I said it there, Deneen drives inside. Deneen draws the defender. Deneen makes a pass. Ratmore finishes off the player. Really good basketball. It's back to that magic number, 17. It's like every time Blarney get it under, they get it back to that 17. Really good fast break there, but really good defense also by O'Donoghue. Linehan is going to get called for the offensive foul on that one. But what about the defence, Jason? Deneen, obviously, knowing he's in three fouls, wants to stay in the game, wants to play in, his, in this uh, national, in the league final. He gets himself in position to take a charge. Yeah, it can't be stated enough the impact that Deneen has had in this game. Darmody drives baseline. Collins on the inside. Sorry, Deneen on the inside. Two doesn't go. O'Leary comes away with it here for Blarney to a Dunhu. Linehan fires a tree. We've got a 14 point game now, four minutes remaining. Larry looking to kind of a bit of a couple of double teams, seeking to get a turnover here. Well, with under four minutes left, and you definitely have to ask some questions anyway, you know. If you're open for a three, you gotta knock it down and see how uh, see how Ratmore will respond. Well that's the first stop they got there, so it's 350 remaining. 59 plays 45. O'Leary on the point, pushing the ball, looking to get a quick offense. Back to O'Leary. O'Donoghue. You know Linehan's going to step out. He wants to have another go. Linehan again for three. It was an 11-point game now. 
And another turnover. I think that turnover will definitely be, time out needs to be called by the Ratmore coach. As I said, if timeout is called. So with 3.28 remaining, we're going to have a timeout. We'll be back very shortly. Back here, three and a half remain in the game. And the ball gets knocked out of bounds. But Ronan Collins, he's involved in the play again. Linehan's been the offense there for Blarney the last two possessions down, knocked down two three pointers. Yeah, he's got to keep looking for it now. As the shot clock runs down, Linehan draws the foul. I don't, think, I don't think that's what Blarney will be looking to do with such. Obviously, they used 21 seconds there, didn't get a shot off. Now they're back to square one. They need to get quick offences. Yeah. Not that quick. I don't know who turns the ball over. Stolen back by O'Leary. But you know, that'll only benefit Rat Morris. 25 seconds, like that two points there, took about 30, 32 seconds to score. They're going to have to be a little quicker than that. For the first time in a long time, Jason, we're down to single digits. 2.45 remaining. Referees are going to call a foul on O'Leary. I don't think the Blarney coach will mind that too much. It's good to see the players obviously get after the ball. That's what they need. That's going to be the third foul, number five. And right, more happy enough to run the clock. Just move the ball, it's down to four on the shot clock. Again, that's just two offensive rebounds in the one possession. Blarney really need to secure these rebounds. And that they do, Linhin comes away with it. Excellent defense done by Collins. Collins makes the block, and Collins is one of the first players up the court. It was good discipline there in the offense from Collins. Obviously, could have taken the quick shot. He knows knows the situation in the game, so he brought the ball back out and reset up for his team. You see another offensive rebound again. Linehan. O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue for three. Six-point game. One thirty remaining. Deneen on the inside, stolen away. Finds O'Donoghue on the break. Four point game, Jason. I think that was a smart time out there to try and stop the. So at 1.19 remaining, we're going to have a timeout. We'll be back very shortly.
And we're back, 119 remaining in the game. Ratmore are going to inbound the ball. Just because obviously they called the timeout and it's under two minutes, they're going to advance the ball three quarters of the court. It means that they obviously have an opportunity to beat the press for free. Now, Jason, with 119, make a call. Who do you think is going to win this game? That's an awkward position you have to put me in there now, Danny. It's tough, you know. The momentum is definitely with Blarney right now. They've hit a lot of shots in the last couple of minutes, but again, you like you like Ronan Collins with the ball in his hand, slowing things down, and if Ratmore can get another couple of offensive rebounds, I think that's secure the win. You can see Blarney here seem to put Jack O'Leary on Ronan Collins there. Maybe they're going to try and not let, not let Collins touch the ball in the offense. Smart decision by the coach, but excellent too to respond. A minute to go, six in it, still plenty of time. O'Donoghue, Linehan, thinks about the shot. O'Donoghue drives inside. Two doesn't go. They need to get the ball in the hand of Collins. Thirty-two seconds to go. Six-point game. They need a quick offense. Blarney need to shoot the ball. But it's a 23 point section remaining, a six point game. 15 seconds to go on the shot clock. If Blarney need to get anything out of this game, they need a quick offense here. Not the option they were probably looking for. No, with the three point shooting they've been doing the last minute or so. All right, we're down to just under 12 seconds remaining. Another six point game. Blair need to go score twice. Two three pointers would do it, Jason. Well, but you have to stop the team on the other end, too. But well, that's the key part in the middle. Well, done who? Excellent defense from Ratmore. Excellent defense. Just under one second to go. And Danny, if we had to do it, who would you call an MVP for this game? It's it's a tough, tough decision. Yeah, it is, but there was one player in particular that really stood out there. Um, number seven, Black, Ronan Collins. I think he did it on both ends of the floor, Jason. Offensively, defensively, you know, what he brought to the team, and especially when uh, Deneen went out in foul trouble, he really stepped up in the defensive rebounds. Definitely that Ronan Collins, number seven. You know, he definitely was probably the most outstanding player to me. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right, too. You know, he had a very calming presence as well. When the, At the end there, when Blarney made the run back, he, he stayed under control, stayed calm, and willed his team to a win. Rob, a good finish of the game, and obviously it'll be um, Skull Pubbles League, League Ra from Ratmore, who'll be the under-16A league champions. That's all this game. Up next, we have the under-19 C-Boys. Thank you.